So the first model, this is the one that I, I if I had to bet, you know, making a probabilistic joke, I would say that you probably most of you have at some point encountered. Um, but I'll I'll uh, I'll do a, a quick review anyway. So each node in, in, a, in a BN, we'll call them BNs, uh, we have a directed a acyclic graph. So no cycles, directed edges. Uh, each node represents a discrete random variable. Typically, in, in examples and everything, typically we do by, uh, Boolean um, random variables. And if there's an edge between two nodes, X and Y, we say that there's that X is a parent uh, of Y, and this represents direct dependence. We'll see this in a, in, a, in a quick example in just a second. And each node is assigned a conditional probabilistic distribution, or called a uh, conditional probability probability table, that precisely encodes this dependence. So the the, the probability that the, um, the variable takes on the different possible values given all possible values for their parents. And that quantifies the effect. This is what the nice computational aspect about this is that each variable is independent of its non-descendants in the graph, given the state of the, of the parent. So if you know what the, the, the parent's values uh, are, then you have probabilistic independence and you can do um, tractable computations, answer queries, that kind of thing. And the absence of an edge between two nodes represents conditional independence. So I won't get into how, exactly how this works because it's a little bit complicated, but there's another concept that we'll see again with uh, Markov random fields called the Markov blanket that in the case of Bayesian networks is a bit more complicated. That's why I didn't put them on the slides, but the Markov blanket of a node is comprised of um, the parents of the node, the, um, the children of the node of the of that node, and the the parents of the children. So if, if you have that universe of, um, of, um, of nodes and you can fix them, you'll say that, we'll see that that's um, the probability of the, of the node is independent of the rest of the graph. That might sound like that's not much, but imagine uh, a Bayesian network with a thousand nodes that you can never you know, really do brute force computations on. And maybe that Markov blanket is comprised of five, six, eight nodes, then you're in luck because you can do uh, computations basically with that severed part of the graph. So the classic example here is this has been you know, explained to death, um, but it's really it's a really nice example by Yuda Pearl, where we have, and another thing that I always like to point out, uh, Yuda Pearl is from California. So um, that's why there's always some reference to earthquakes and that kind of thing. So this, this person has an anti-burglary uh, alarm in their home. It's pretty good, as we'll see the, the probabilities that they have of detecting um, you know, burglaries, but it sometimes also responds to small earthquakes. So um, the setup here is that we have two neighbors, John and Mary, who have agreed to call us at work if they hear the alarm. So imagine the house and you know, Mary lives on one side and John on the other. John will always call when he hears the alarm, but sometimes he mistakes the sound of the phone with that of the alarm. So, you know, it sounds pretty, pretty similar. So maybe he'll, um, he, there'll, there'll be a false positive there. Mary, on the other hand, um, enjoys listening to loud music. So sometimes the, your, your alarm sounds and they, they don't hear the alarm at all. So, the kind of questions that we want to, uh, to address in given this kind of tool is given evidence regarding who called and of course who didn't, we would like to estimate the probability that there is in fact a burglary. So should I be worried or not? Is basically the question. So like this, this, this scenario, we're at home. John calls saying that he hears the alarm, but Mary doesn't. Is there a, bur a burglary? So here we have, let's consider these five um, Boolean variables, burglary, earthquake, alarm, John calls, and Mary calls. And one way to model this is with this Bayesian network. So we have, we'll see that nodes that don't have any parents are called um, prior, just they have prior probabilities. So what's the, the probability that your house uh, will be uh, the victim of a, of a burglary? Suppose we're in a pretty, uh, you know, safe neighborhood, it's one in 1,000. And because we're in California, it's twice as likely that there will be a, an earthquake, so it's two in one in, um, 
in a thousand. Here's where, where it gets interesting. The alarm, as we said, is pretty good at detecting burglaries. So suppose that uh, here we have one entry for each kind of uh, setting that these could have. So if they're, let's, let's look at this one. Um, this one was the most interesting. If we, there is in fact a burglary and no earthquake, so true for B and, uh, and false for E, there's a 94% chance that the, the alarm will detect it. If there's a very unlucky scenario where there's both a burglary and an earthquake, then it goes up slightly to 95. This is the, um, the third row here is where there's no burglary, but I get a false positive due to the earthquakes. It's, you know, it's pretty high, 29% chance that the alarm will sound, but there has to be a, an earthquake. So it's, it's, a, it's a small small chance of that event. And if that happens, there's a 29% chance within that universe that um, the alarm will sound anyway. And the last one is, the probability that the, the alarm would just go off for some other reason, right? So no burglary, no earthquake. There's still one in 1,000 chance that this will, will sound. These, um, these two CPTs or conditional probability tables, they encode what we had in the, in the problem statement where we said, um, suppose that the, the alarm sounds, John will call most of the time, 90% of the time. And if the alarm doesn't sound, he'll, um, he'll call us 5% of the time, right? So for Mary, Mary is lower because as, as the problem statement said, she enjoys loud music. So it's a lower chance that she'll, she'll hear it. So that's why this is 0.7. And she has um, uh, a lower uh, false positive also than, than John. So, the, the theory tells us that the joint probability distribution of, of you know, all possible worlds, given this, these five variables, can be factored in this way because of the, con the conditional independence that I was talking about in, in, in the previous slide. So there's a, a really interesting property that given any probability distribution, there exists a, a Bayesian network that encodes it, though there might be very you know, unwieldy structures in the graph that might be necessary for this to happen. So it's not, it's not the case that any probability distribution can be encoded in a nice, nice one like this. This is a pretty nice structure. You see this is, there are, um, you know, no, it's a very simple structure, but imagine with five variables, you could have, you know, everybody with everybody connected in the whole mess and that would be, you know, not very, not, not a very good model. And there are several common problems to solve given a BN. Um, the most, one of the most common is probability of evidence. So compute the probability that a subset of variables uh, have given values. Uh, marginal a, a posteriori probability that is given evidence E in a variable XI, compute the probability. And most probable explanation that is given evidence, find the assignment for the rest of the variables that has the greatest probability. So for instance, in our, in our case, we might say, John calls and Mary doesn't, then what's the most probable setting for alarm, right? And as you can see, I, I went over these, but these are all bad complexity classes. So sharp P complete, PP complete, and the decision version, NP complete is the, the nicest class and it's still you know, a, a very, um, it, it's an intractable class in general. So all of these problems are intractable in their general case, but the, the good news with these models is that they have special cases with associated uh, polynomial time algorithms that are either, depending on the case, either exact or approximate. So it's, it's, a, very, it's a very noble, noble model, the BNs.